This is what I have to do to make a new episode quickly while she is away. <sighs> okay. Hey, what's up, guys? Chris Cohen here, and we're taking a quick break between arcane episodic reactions. Basically, like in anime, this is a filler episode, but one that you're probably gonna enjoy a lot. To check out the call cinematic from League of Legends, because so many of you guys have posted in the comments that we need to do this. How can I say? No. So I'm super excited about this, even though with Arcane, I think it's gonna be quite hard to be super impressed, but yet again, this is League of Legends. So with that said, let's fire up YouTube, and today, I'm sure you guys are gonna notice something is different and very special. I am using the most gamer-oriented, feature-packed browser, Opera GX, that has brought to you guys today's episode. Do yourselves a favor and click my link in the description to download Opera GX for free while you're watching this episode, as it is a sick browser for us gamers. From full browser resources like the GX Control, which is meant to help us to enhance our computer's performance and get rid of lag while playing games and listening to music or having our tabs open to a built-in RAM and CPU limiter, we control how much juice our browser is getting and how much we're allocating to what we want. Moreover, we can control how much bandwidth Opera GX is using by enabling a network limiter to gain more performance versus something like Google Chrome, which is notorious for sucking so much performance out of our system. For me personally, this also comes so much in handy because because I can control how much performance my browser is getting when I do video editing, whether it is After Effects or Premiere Pro, to give them the best they can get. As I'm sure you have noticed by now, another sick feature is the UI customization, which we have full control with Opera GX. So if I go to my settings over here, you can see I can quickly adjust between dark, light or automatic, as well as select specific themes or configure my own. And actually, if we just browse through, this one, for example, looks quite sick. Now, this will depend on your setup and your preferred color scheme, but Opera GX gives you all the customization you want. Another sick feature, the moment you open the browser, is your GX corner, which you find right up there. And it has everything to do with offering you guys the latest news when it comes to gaming, free up-to-date games you can try out, best deals, new releases, and all the gaming news in one single accessible place. Of course, you have all the goodies from an Opera browser as well when it comes to messenger integration, WhatsApp, Twitch, and so on. And yes, Opera GX is also on mobile called GX Mobile, and it can be connected to your desktop version. By far the best part of this is that it's free to get. If you click my link in the description, you can have it downloading in the background while we check out the call cinematic from League of Legends. Full screen in one, two, three. Forge Master. It's a bit low. Whoa. Okay, I'm guessing another music based epicness. We know her. Sci-Fi Spartan Oh Now it's getting loud Let's go Yes girl Ooh, sick There's just something about tag team play. Badass. Ooh. Thundaga. Ooh, let's go. Ooh. Mate, it looks like 300, but, you know, sci-fi. Ooh, Valkyrie-like chick. This is what ate Boba Fett. Ooh. Ooh. That's 
sick. That was it. Mate, the quality CGI wise is sick. Look at that. Yeah, I take back what I said about um. Yes. This is where a cinematic takes a breather before he ramps right back up. Oh, what a sick shot, man. Ooh, oh my god. Oh, she went in. This is... Let's go, boy. Sparta kick this shit. Sick. As always, like this cinematic, like this video as well, guys. It always helps. Oh, I'm not signed in, really. Well, I just opened the cinematic in my regular Opera browser that I'm logged in and like the cinematic. And let's jump right back to it. First of all, sick cinematic. It's kind of follows the same um, style as previous League of Legends cinematics. We basically have a sick song, and then we have some epic visuals going on the background. Very interestingly minor uh, natural occurring sounds playing beneath the song as we go through and of course depending on the lyrical uh, state of the song we have some really epic things going on and if I'm not mistaken there were three that is two there were three different battles interchanging between as the song went on one was on ice the one was in like the desert looking place and the other one was like the spartan slash sci-fi portal looking thing which was sick quality wise freaking amazing made some they really have gone to town when it comes to hair effects and eyes it's so interesting that eyes really make a massive difference into how something looks in terms of realism because you know they say eyes is the portal of the soul so if something has soulless eyes it's really hard to like get on board with it if you know what i mean but anyways guys let me know what you thought in the comment section down below and let's jump right back to it and talk about some cool cinematic things filmmaking techniques visual effects and so on so we start with some uh border looking um lava um smith making sword situation going on the song bleeds in. That's very cool. Boom! I like. I don't know why, but for some reason his fingers look like they are ignited as well, which is really cool and makes things quite fantastical. So if you notice, the sound is quite dampened. So it's not. It's not occurring as if we're there. It's almost as if we're looking through a memory or from far apart. See. We got to our first location. Her design is interesting when it comes to uh, the fact that she has iced horns. Oh man, I love this. Iced horns, but one of them is cut off. Look at this, man. This is like painting. This is amazing, mate. Having the skill, the imagination, and the technical know-how to put this on an actual screen for us to watch, basically, is so amazing. Like being able to imagine places like this and then actually, you know, make them for people to experience on the screen will forever be one of my most sought out things to be able to do. Really sick. I like this color scheme. When it comes to color, 
as I told you guys multiple, multiple times, color plays a character to itself. So here we have three different color schemes going on. One is very wintry, so we play a lot with teal values, blue values, and white. Uh, the other one is warm values, so we play a lot with like red tones, purple tones, and things like this. And everything comes together which is really cool. And the third one, which is like the Spartan looking guy, is very dark, but it has quite a vibrant sci-fi look to it. Now, usually you have something contra contra contrasting within the scene color-wise, just to give that contrast, whether it is blood or a character trait. Imagine if one of the characters, let's say, in his costume, he had vibrant red, how nicely it would contrast with the scene. Very interestingly, very subtle detail, but if you notice how they blend the different scenes together, they actually use a cool trick here, which is basically using particle effects, whether it is snow and actual kind of like atmosphere flying through. As they cut to the next scene, it almost carries on from the exact same direction and same kind of volume of atmospheric wind and particles going on. So if you go frame by frame, you can see it moving here. And as it cuts to the next scene, it carries on moving in dust form though. I think that's a cool detail. Ooh. See what I mean about tones? Again, another sick... Um, imagery here they did the same thing in the other one they start close up from like uh the animal to the character to the landscape and they do the same thing here close up of an item character boom you can see that reflection and like that kind of like um approach to this reflected through the different scenes how sick is this made how it's like a giant scratch cutting off the head that's sick so basically this serves as kind of like establishing what's about to happen and gives us enough visual intrigue which is extremely extremely important to do when it comes to filmmaking and it also builds up because we can see here things are starting to move and the song builds up as well I see, see that? So now, for example, they use the bird as it flies through and then it's almost as if the bird motivates our camera to sweep through and that transition happens to swipe through to the next scene. It's really cool. And if you see, we're looking from a top of kind of like that mountain, swipe through and now the guy is climbing a mountain. This is really interesting. Mate, do you see that? Oh, they have skin detail is really good on this one. Boom! How cool does that look, man? That looks sick. I love the composition as well. One third, our character. The other third, his focus and what we see as like something to obtain, basically. And again, the beautiful visuals with the sky, the nebula looking thing. That is just amazing, man. This is actually this specific scene. Believe it or not, is that not that hard to make because the camera movement is very simplified. And if you were to shoot this somehow, you know, real life, you don't have to make 3D things. You can just Photoshop a portal and then put 2D assets to make the portal and what it looks through. So this way you don't have to completely 3D make an entire scene from scratch. But this way you still show your audience and your vision basically. So this is a good tip guys. Do not be, you know, overwhelmed by the technical specifications of a scene that you have in mind because of complexity and how much 3D work it needs, artistry and that sort of thing. Because you can always do the same thing but in a simpler form but still you get your point across and that is far better than not doing it at all. Love it. See? That is really cool. Boom! Okay, that is sick. Let's go back and just look at the visuals, man. See? Do you see what I mean about the eyes? They look like they have soul in them, and of course her pores are very detailed. Now, one thing that still is not as good or realistic or maybe it's not, you know, approached this way is that in real life, our skin and our light conditions and all that stuff would create more harsh kind of like shadows or speckles on the skin and things like this. So basically what I'm trying to say, it would not be as 
perfect or as smooth. It would be more harsh, more edgy. Some points will look off a bit, but in a realistic way. These things look a bit too perfect, which is fine, but you know, like a little battle angel, uh, battle a angel. The movie CGI wise was amazing, but yet again, I was catching myself feeling it's missing that it's missing that imperfection that real life has that somehow makes it perfect. You know what I mean? Oh, so sick, man. That is sick, mate. Oh, look at that. I'm just fanboying over this. Plus, let's be honest, two girls fighting together to be the monster, how better can it get? Come on. I love this. This is so cool. So, boom. You know what I find really interesting about game fights is that their timing of it is actually off. So, you know, a character will make a move, take a small break of awesomeness, and then go on. I wonder how that, that would translate. If you do it live action, you know what I mean? Live action, you'd be like, boom, 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 boom. You wouldn't be... I don't know, um, this has me intrigued. Oh, sick. Ooh. I wonder how we would do a sword with energy. That would be cool. You could have, a, you would need a prop sword, obviously, and then you would compose 2D elements, but you, you wouldn't be able to move it much uh, unless it was all 3D. So, what I would suggest on this one is to summon the sword, put energy on it, and then have the energy go in it as if it's like embracing it and like channeling it. And this way, you could have this awesome visual scene where the energy and the sword are one and they become one. And then, because the energy gets absorbed, you can have your sword then swinging around. Just things of how you could accomplish similar things stuff without needing a massive budget and like that sort of thing. Love the song as well mate. It just makes it so cool. Love that. How sick was that? This reminds me of no, wait. Uh, this Boom! I call this, and many of you guys call this the Achilles uh, attack move, basically. And I've tried to, in some way or form, incorporate it in my project as well, whether it was the Star Wars Duel of the Force uh, scene or the Paragon Reloaded initial kind of like power punch. I just actually love this kind of move, and it's really cool to see it here as well. Done. Way, way better, but we'll get there. Dude, ah, oh, sick, man. I love it. So, very interestingly, when you have a fight, it needs beats. It cannot be one thing constantly, epicness, violence, whatever you want to call it. It cannot be one thing constantly going on. You need to give your audience breathing moments. And that comes in the form of ramping up, ramping down, giving it a breath, going back up, going back down, allowing the audience to get excited, then, then embrace that excitement and calm down a bit. And then go again and then again and then again and then again until the final one, which hopefully is the really big one. So this is what happens now. And of course, every song has this as well, whether it is the form of like a solo or a really quiet moment before the final punch. And uh, it's really cool to see it here. And visually as well, we have the sword going in. I wonder what is the deal with that sword? I love this scene. That's sick, man. Boom. Gorgeous. 
Look at all the swordsmen and all the fallen. Oh, masterful. It's the classic, you know, rise, even though you've been beaten or everything seems lost. Beaten and broken. Reflecting the lyrics to the visuals as we've talked on other episodes. Oh, what a sick shot, man. Deal. How cool it is that she went in. Ooh. The interesting thing is... Pretty eyes. It is interesting. That uh, her m powers have that vibrant purple hue to them. But the monster has the same kind of like vibrant purple hue to it. So I'm wondering what gives there. You know what I mean? Oh, oh. This is Sparta. Use the force. Yes. Oh. How sick was that? Boom, and then he breaks them. Blizzard at its best. I love the quiet moment. Glory and the fall. Glory and the Why is it deal with that sword, man? It looks so cool. Really cool. I think some of you guys know what's going on. So please do let me know in the comment section down below. This was another six cinematic, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Next episode, we're back with Arcane and Co. <clears throat> And carrying on the, epi the episodic reactions. I can't wait to reach the final one and lose our minds together. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, stay awesome and creative. <laughs>